Well, I'm grinding bevels today and I have one more knife to do and I realized I'm coming up on the Trekker H number 100, which is pretty cool. It's about the only design I have that I have serial numbers for all of them. And um, I thought this would be a good day to go over freehand bevels, trying to get them as crispy as possible. All the stuff I've learned through the years to just get them cleaner and straighter and all that good stuff. So today we're going to go over belt progression, speeds, um, and everything. So hopefully you guys pick up a few tricks. Sorry, the shot's an absolute disaster. I've been going like crazy, um, but uh, let's get into it. So the knife we're going to grind today is this one right here. It's kind of my, it's a normal little hunting EDC kind of knife. And this one is already heat treated. It's in Magna Cut and it's surface ground. Now I've got my layout fluid on. I'm ready to scribe my center line. And then I got the bright idea to try to slow this all down and show you guys how I grind the bevels in this knife. Now this one I actually think is number 98. And then the other Trekker, which is the exact same design as this, but it doesn't have a handle. It's the minimalist design. I think I've done 60 or 70 of those. So all in all, there's probably about 200 of these that I've ground with the same bevels. So it's definitely given me a lot of time to tweak and figure out ways to make them as clean as possible. Now, that being said, every single one is still a challenge. Um, I think that that's something that people get in their heads that they think that over time you just get to where you can freehand grind and it's not a problem. That is not the case at all, at least for me. Um, every one I still have to really focus and really try to do a good job and some turn out better than others. Now, um, the first step to this is getting our center scribe line in and getting our file guide on it. Now that's something that's somewhat controversial is freehand grinding and still using some sort of a guide. Now I use one of these little uh, file guides. This is just one I made and it goes like this. So it gives you an accurate plunge so you're not it's so one less thing to worry about, plus it gives you something kind of to hold on to while you're grinding. You can buy these. Um, I'll put a link below so you guys can pick one up. But again, you can make one. This one's just out of 01 Tool Steel that I heat treated. And you can see, really simple. But once it's on the knife, you can kind of see it goes like that. And then it gives you a, like a stopping point so you don't go past that with your belt. So let's talk about what we're going to use today to grind this and we'll get right into it. So something that is super important uh, when it comes to keeping things really clean and consistent with your bevels is having a grinder that has a DFD. Um, if you don't have that, uh, I mean, you can still do it. It's just super tricky. Um, being able to slow that belt down a lot once you get into the higher grits for me is really helpful. So today I'm using the KMG TX um, and I'm using all red label abrasives belts. So we're going to start with a 36 grit belt to really hog off material. Um, we're going to move to a 60, then a 120, and then probably a 180 or a 220 depending on how everything's looking. So. We're gonna get right into it. I'm going to get my scribe line put in and we'll start grinding. I'll stop talking. So you can see right there, we're pretty much ready to grind. Now I put a little bit of tape down before I clamp this on because this blade is going to be satin finished so the flats of this knife are done already. Um, sometimes I'll go over and touch them up with a little hand sanding if I bump it or anything like that but that's pretty much ready to start grinding. Now um, if you are maybe doing a new design or you're a new knife and you have a specific uh, bevel that you're trying to achieve you can put some layout die on the flats and then scribe how high up you want that bevel to go. I've ground a million of these like we talked about already, so I know where everything's gotta be. 
Um, but that way you're not going up too high with those coarser grits and putting in grind lines that you can't get out later because you brought it up too high. So what we're gonna do, start with a 36 grit belt. And basically all I'm doing with the 36 is hogging off material on that edge and getting the edge thickness down um, before I start bringing my bevel height up because once you start bringing it up, you wanna make sure you're at a little bit finer grit so you can always get those scratch lines out. So I'm not sure if that made any sense, but let's start grinding and I'm gonna explain it kind of as we go. Okay, so kind of what I'm gonna do here is stop every grit progression. I'm gonna stop and explain kind of what I did. Now you can see where this is at right now. This is again with a 36 grit belt, um, full power. I put it all the way on 100 when I'm hogging off the material um, just to get rid of a lot of that material. You can see it doesn't really matter right now how even it is. You're just trying to keep your edge even, consistent, and that's why that, how that center scribe line really helps a lot for me is you can kind of make a pass, look at it, and then say, all right, I got to put a little more pressure on that spot. For me, it's always in the center, um, kind of slow down a little bit on that center spot to remove a little more material. Again, the cleanness of the bevel and stuff like that doesn't really matter right now with the 36 as long as you don't bring it up too high. Um, that way you can keep refining kind of as you go. So now we're gonna slap on a 60 grit belt. And with that 60 grit, we're gonna bring that edge thinness down. Again, I'm not really gonna go into details on how thick the edge is, I guess, because everybody's different on how thick they like to leave the edge for final before adding that secondary bevel. Um, for this knife in particular, I, leave, I take it to about 15 thousandths when it's all said and done. Um, so you kind of just have to slowly work that edge to where you want it specifically, depending on what kind of knife you're doing. So let's throw on a 60 grit belt and I'm going to work that edge down a little bit, bring my bevel height up slightly. Again, not to take it too high to where I can't get the scratch lines out when I go to the next grit. Um, all right, let's do it. So I always worry on these videos that I talk too much, but for this video, I'm not gonna worry about that because I think that I really want to explain all my thought process when I'm doing this um, for people that really want to get better at it. It's not a quick thing, it's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, so I just finished up with the 60 grit. Um, the main thing with this is slow your slow your grinder down a little bit. I ran that at 70% power. Um, and again, that's all just feel. If, if you like to run it wide open, do that. But I find that as you progress with the grits, um, slowing it down a little bit helps me a lot. Um, there's a couple things that I do that I'm not, I don't really want to tell you guys to do because I know it's not right. When I am grinding this way, that's all good. A lot of people will, when they go to do the other side, they switch hands, so they're always keeping the edge up. I think that that's the correct way to do it, but for whatever reason, I was never able to figure out 
how to do it that way. So I always will grind edge up like this around and I use this hand, flip it and grind edge down. Um, I've been able to figure out that doing it that way, I can make it look good and it's just what feels right. So don't do it that way. If you can do it this way with your uh, other hand with edge up, do it that way. But I don't know, that's just how I do it. So anyways, 60 grit is done. Let me show you guys kind of what these bevels are looking like right now. Um, they're kind of even, but again, we're not really going to worry about it until this next grip progression. Um, again, the main thing is keeping your edge thickness really nice how you want it and even on both sides and also your plunge keeping that really centered up is more important than the actual Christmas of the crispness <laughs> of the bevel. So right now, everything's looking pretty good. Um, I think that something that needs to be talked about is the freshness of the belts. I see a lot of people that try to get more out of a belt than what you can, especially for bevels. Now, when I'm doing one of these knives, uh, once I get uh, my 60 is always pretty fresh. Um, I don't like to do more than a couple knives with a 60. Um, and then once you get to the 120 and beyond, when you're trying to get the best bevel possible, I go with a brand new belt pretty much every time. You can use those for other things once you do your bevels. I use them for the surface grinder, for shape and handles. It's not like you have to throw them away, but when you're grinding a bevel like this, go with the fresh, crisp belts. It makes all the difference in the world. Trust me, it's worth it. So we are gonna throw a brand new 120 grit on now. Um, I'm gonna slow that belt speed down to about 55 to 60% power. And now is when we're going to really start refining that bevel and trying to get it as even as possible by freehand. So let's do it. So I'm actually stopping in the middle of 120 to show you guys something that I'm kind of thinking about now. Oh, let's see if I can show you. Now, this side's a little worse than this side, um, but you can see where that plunge starts, comes up and over, and it almost swoops. It's kind of comes down a little bit, if you can see that. Now, a little bit of that is okay just because the way that this uh, profile of this knife is, but um, I'm not completely happy with it. So you can kind of see it gets a little swoopy and I see that a lot uh, with people doing freehand bevels. And now what you have to do to correct that is kind of start your grind normal, which you can, hopefully I'm trying to give you some different camera angles to show you guys how I do it. I start and match, you, you always match the bevel on your belt and get a feel for it before you start going. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is as I come across that flat platen, I'm gonna slowly tweak my pressure down like this, kind of where that swoop is, okay? Which will very slowly work that to get it flatter. Um, this is all really, really, really mild pressure. And a lot of times it's a lot of slow, easy passes as you can watch yourself work that up and correct the, correct the issue, which is this little swoop right now. So I thought I'd stop and explain that a little bit. Um, a lot of really light pressure changes while you're doing this is key, key, key. Um, so Again, the height is pretty close. My weak side, which is my downside, is a little higher still. So we're going to uh, probably bring this bevel height up just a smidge and try to work. This one, again, is pretty close, 
but this one you can see it starts high and then swoops lower and then comes back up. So again, really light pressure changes is gonna tweak that. Um, so let me kick this back on and see if I can get this looking good. So one of my little tips for doing this is pick up a couple of these Trizac, it's upside down, Trizac belts um, made by 3M. This is an A100 and you can see it's got kind of like a cube looking abrasive, really cool stuff. And they're really stiff. Um, I find that when you're doing your final passes, if you use a soft backed, uh, abrasive it's really hard to keep it good and even so using one of these is really really helpful for me or just a really hard backed higher grip belt so let me see if I can show you where this is at right now um, we've got a little spot here I need to touch up with this see what kind of has a different grind. That's that's part of the challenge of doing this is keeping it consistent through the whole bevel and not ending up with bumps and ups and downs. Let's see, that side's looking good. You can see how I eliminated that swoop um, by, like I said, applying a little more pressure. Again, this is so much feel, it's hard to make these videos and explain stuff because you really have to be hands-on doing it to um, kind of understand what I'm doing. but. Hopefully, again, you can take all of this stuff and then put it into the next time you try to grind bevels and it helps a little bit. So now the 120 is done. Again, we've got an A100 on now. We're going to slow that belt speed way down to maybe 40% power. And now all we're doing is refining the scratch pattern, getting rid of those 120 grit uh, grind lines and just barely uh adjusting the bevel real real precise um getting that very top edge of that bevel um with that a100 to crisp that up a little bit and i'm um, trying not to screw up what we've already done so um, that's the goal finish this off again i've got to bring my tip up on this side a little bit you can see where it's at there and where that's at there it's a little shorter on this side so Again, it's all about applying pressure. When I go to fix this, I'm gonna have to kind of hog, go in a little bit like this. Obviously I'm way exaggerated, um, but that way I should be able to bring that tip up and hope to keep this good and even. Looks like my, this side has to come up just a hair. Now again, with that A100, you, if it's fresh, like this one is, you can make some adjustments with your bevel. Um, slightly, but again, go really, really slow. I mean, I didn't show everything with that 120, but I worked on it for about 10 or 15 minutes compared to the other ones. It's a couple minute process. Once you get into the finer grit, slow way, way down. Every pass, look at what you're doing and look at what pressure you're applying and how it changes the grind. That's super, super key to this. Um, so let's fire this up again, slow, slow, slow. And hopefully I can um, fix a couple little imperfections and not screw this up. happy with where this is at again this is a uh, this knife is getting left with the machine satin bevels so um, if you are doing Damascus or something like that this is a good spot to start hand sanding 
but um, here you can see kind of what this looks like. And they turned out pretty even. Again, I've got a little touching up to do on the tip right there. Eh, it's not gonna show up in the camera probably, but okay. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Um, I found it a lot more challenging to do this stopping and explaining and kind of doing all that stuff. So I'm not a hundred percent happy with it, but I'm about 90, 5% happy with it. So I guess that's good enough. Um, if you guys have any questions through this process, I tried to explain this as in-depth as possible. I think, again, there's only so much I can explain and do uh, to help you guys out. A lot of this comes with just hands-on practice and kind of putting everything I just said into that to hopefully refine your skills a little bit. Again, I'm still learning. Every time I grind a knife, I learn something and a little different way to tweak it this way or this way to change how something's looking. But I think that this should give you guys a good idea on what goes into doing a freehand bevel and hopefully help you guys along the way at least a little bit. Um, I think that the key to this that I've learned, the most important thing is slow down Make sure when the day comes that you are grinding some bevels, make sure your head's in it. And again, that's part of the problem with today is trying to stop and then explain along the way. It really, it's amazing how much it throws me off. But again, it turned out pretty good. Um, fresh belts, slow down, watch your belt tracking, um, keep it consistent, and um, I'm sure you guys will get it. So again, hopefully this helped you. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments below. I'll put links below to everything I used today to hopefully make the process a little easier. If you found it super helpful, jump on and join my Patreon. I think it's five bucks a month. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, like always, guys, thanks for watching.